to your class. Hello. I hope you had an amazing weekend with mommy and daddy and your brothers and sisters. I hope that you took lots of walks and are just having so much fun outside. In my house right now, we are doing a lot of sidewalk chalk. So my kids are drawing rainbows because rainbows mean hope. And they're writing lots of Bible scriptures and hearts and just spreading love to all of our neighbors so that they can see that we're doing okay. And um, we just give them a little joy. So if you guys remember the last time we read the Bible, we talked about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. That's a hard word, Gethsemane. And Jesus was really afraid. Do you remember? And he prayed to God. And at the end of his prayer, he opened his eyes and said, I trust you. I will do what you asked. And then Jesus was so brave. He let the soldiers take him. He went to trial and the the Romans were saying, let's crucify him. Now, if you remember, Miss Amy has told you guys every time we read the Bible that Jesus loves us so much. He loves us. Let's give ourselves a hug. That's how much he loves us. So put our arms around ourselves and let's give ourselves a big squeeze. Oh my gosh, I can feel the love. Can you feel the love? He loves us so much that he died on the cross for us. And Jesus was a real man, remember? And it hurt a lot. And he had lots of bad boo-boos. But he did it anyways because he loves us. And now this story that I'm going to share with you today is called The Crucifixion. And it's in our Jesus Storybook Bible. See? Our Bible from school. And it tells us what happens when Jesus dies. And it's... It's a sad story, but I don't want you guys to be afraid because Jesus comes back and that will be our next story. Okay, so let's read about this book. It's called The Sun Stops Shining. If you look at the picture, there's soldiers and there's Jesus and he's carrying a big heavy cross. Oh my goodness, they're not nice. Let's see what happens. So you're a king, are you? Says the Roman soldiers. And it says they jeered. So they were teasing him like, like, you're a king. Ugh, yeah, right. That's not nice, right? He said, then you'll need a crown and a robe. So they gave Jesus a crown made out of horns. Ow. And they put a purple robe on him. Then they pretended to bow down to him and say, your majesty, your majesty. They whipped him. Ooh, and they spat at him. They didn't understand that this was the prince of life. He was the king of heaven and earth, and he had come down to rescue them. The soldiers made him a sign. It said, our king. And then they nailed it to a wooden cross. They walked up a hill and outside the city. Jesus carried the cross on his back. Jesus had never done anything wrong. But they were going to kill him the way criminals were killed. Now, remember, I've always told you, Jesus never made a mistake. He was perfect, which is why he was chosen. God picked him a long time ago. So this is part of his plan. Don't be scared, okay? They nailed Jesus to the cross. And Jesus said, Father, oh, Father, forgive him. They do not know what they are doing. You say that you've come to rescue us, the people shouted, but you can't even rescue yourself. They were wrong. Jesus could have rescued himself. A legion of angels would have flown to his side if he called. Now, a legion is a lot of angels. If Jesus called, they would have come to help him. But Jesus knew he had to do this because he loves you. If you were really the son of God, you could just climb down off that cross, one of them said. And of course, they were right. Jesus could have just climbed down. Actually, he could have just said a word and it would all have stopped. Like when he healed that little girl. Do you guys remember that? Or when he stilled the storm with just this word, hush. Do you remember the time he fed those 5,000 people? I do. But guess what, guys? Jesus stayed. You see, they didn't understand. It wasn't the nails that kept Jesus there. It was love. It was love, friends. Papa, Jesus cried frantically, searching the sky. Papa, where are you? Don't leave me. 
And for the first time and the last, when he spoke, nothing happened. Just a horrible, endless silence. God didn't answer. He had to turn away from his boy. Tears, oh, tears rolled down Jesus' face. The face of the one who would wipe away every tear from every eye. Here's Jesus. He's the silence of our king. He has some bad boo-boos. Poor Jesus. Even though it was midday, a dreadful darkness covered the face of the earth. The sun could not shine. The earth trembled and quaked. The great mountains shook. Rocks split into two until it seemed like the whole world would break and that creation itself would tear apart. And when they say that class, they mean the world, like the mountains and the sky and the sea, the creation itself was gonna break. That's how, how much people felt. That's how much the earth felt when Jesus was taking on our burdens. The full force of the storm of God's fierce anger at sin was coming down on his own son. Instead of his people, but this was the only way God could destroy that sin and not destroy his children. That's us, whose hearts were filled with sin. Then Jesus shouted in a loud voice, It is finished! And it was. He had done it. Jesus had rescued the whole world. Father, Jesus cried, I give you my life. And with a great sigh, he let himself die. Strange clouds and shadows filled the sky. They were purple, orange, and black, kind of like a bruise. Jesus' friends gently carried him. They laid him in a new tomb carved out of rock. How could Jesus die? What had gone wrong? What did this mean? They didn't know anything anymore, except they did know their hearts were broken. That's the end of Jesus, the leaders said. But just to be sure, they sent some strong shoulders, soldiers to guard the tomb. They hauled a huge stone in front of the door so that no one could get in or out. So good news, my friends. Jesus died on the cross because he loves us so much. And I'm so thankful that Jesus loved me that much that he would take all those bad boo-boos so I get to go to heaven with him and God. Oh, are you thankful? Take a few minutes and talk to mom and dad about how you, what you are thankful for and how you feel blessed. Now, blessed means it's something that's come to us that's amazing. I feel really blessed that I got to be your teacher. And I feel really blessed that I got to share that story with you. Now you share with mom and dad how you are grateful and thankful and what you feel blessed of for. All right, you guys, I will read another story on Friday. And this one is the good news. I can't wait to share it with you. Have a good week. <laughs>